I've watched with some distress as this paleo fad has swept through the media and many people have jumped on it because, ooh, they like that taste of meat in their mouth. And as my friend Dr. John McDougall says, people love to hear good news about bad habits. And, oh, that's what the paleo folks ate. That's, that was the most healthy, natural diet. That's what we all would be eating. Like every, like every caveman had a mastodon in the freezer and spent all day eating mammoth meat. I'm a, I'm a caveman. I eat meat. That's what I do. And so it's a high flesh-based type of eating style. Well, first of all, it's not historically true. Uh, when they examine uh, the fossilized fecal droppings from the, from the uh, paleo camps there, it uh, turns out the, that we were eating huge amounts of fiber, much more than we are today, and most of the calories brought into the ancient paleolithic camps were gathered by the women who spent all day pulling up starchy roots and tubers and wild legumes and wild grasses and harvesting nuts and acorns and berries. Uh, we were largely starchivores. We, uh, that's what got us through the winter seasons. And to think that there was flesh all the time uh, is simply not true. Most hunts were unsuccessful. Uh, if they did bring back a carcass, it rotted quickly. Um, meat was a relative rarity uh, in the diet rather than the that being so bountiful as, uh, as the paleo mythos would have us believe. But history aside, uh, we have this lovely long digestive system, su superbly uh, engineered to digest plant materials. And when you think, if you believe in evolution at all, you know, before the paleo era 10,000 years ago, for the two million years before that, we and, and the simian ancestors who evolved with us spent all day eating leaves and berries and fruits uh, as they still do. To think that suddenly 10,000 years ago we suddenly became the carnivorous ape, well our dentition does not uh, support that. Uh, people say, oh we got these canine teeth, they were supposed to be eating meat. But if you look in the mirror, and, you know, open your mouth in the bathroom, look in the mirror, you'll find your canine teeth are shorter. Your canines on the side here, these pointy ones, are shorter than your central incisors. Go look at your house cat and then your dog. You'll see true canine teeth. They're much longer, and those are flesh-tearing teeth. Well, ours are meant for uh, biting into apples and, and potatoes. It works good for that, but we don't from, the, from top to the bottom. This is not a flesh-digesting uh, system by a long shot. And from a medical point of view, I think the folks eating of this flesh-based diet are opening the door to a host of diseases. If someone asked me, Doc, I want to cause a colon cancer, how can I do that? I'd say, simple. You pack your colon full of meat three times a day, let that rub on your colon for 20, 30 years. Watch what you set off in there. There's no accident that uh, people who eat flesh-based diets have a lot more colon cancer uh, than, the, than the plant eaters. <clears throat> the, um, uh, the food we eat determines the bacteria that live in your gut. You eat sugar-eating foods, you're gonna summon up sugar-eating bacteria. Well, you drop animal flesh down your gut two, three times a day, you're gonna summon up bacteria like Clostridia and Peptostreptococci that love to eat carnitine, a major constituent of animal muscle. Well, <clears throat> the next time that chicken breast, that salmon steak, that beef filet comes down, those bacteria who you've summoned up through this diet they can't wait for it to get their hands on that carnitine and creatine because they don't care about you. They're going to turn that carnitine and creatine into stuff called trimethylamine, which your liver will turn into trimethylamine oxide. This is a molecule from hell. This drives cholesterol into the artery walls and is a major factor in atherosclerosis, leads to heart attacks and strokes. And I've heard already stories about uh, guys on paleo diets dropping dead on the treadmill at 49. Oh, he looked so healthy, but inside he was an old, old man. Uh, these bacteria that, that come in meat, um, they generate stuff called endotoxin that makes your gut leaky and allows proteins uh, to leak out in your bloodstream, flow through your tissue, sets off autoimmune diseases. And so, though there's this whole mythos about the paleo diet being natural, the truth is, from a medical point of view, I fear these friends and colleagues and patients of mine are 
setting themselves up for an epidemic of colon cancer, heart attacks, strokes, autoimmune disease, gastrointestinal inflammatory bowel disease. I think this is a diet of death uh, uh, from, a, from the medical personal point of view, certainly a diet of death from the animal points of view, and it contributes to the slaughter of 70 billion animals on this planet every year. But this diet, if everybody adopts, is going to kill this planet. There's no possible way that you can serve animal flesh three times a day to nine billion people. It's going to destroy everything that supports life on this planet. So from top to bottom, what it does to the people, what it does to the animals, what it does to the planet, it's an unsustainable, deadly diet. And, and for this reason, I, I think we were designed to eat plants, and that, I think, uh, should be the major constituent of our diet without question.